you for the infinite possibility to create each and every experience moment by moment as we move in alignment with all that is you. We hold our minds and our hearts open as you continue to guide us through to a greater good, the highest and best for all. As we start the new year, we continue to grow forward, shining our light as you. Thank you, sweet spirit. Heal what needs to be healed. Reveal what needs to be revealed. Lead us where you need us and speak to us in ways that we clearly understand. We know there is only one power and one presence in the universe and in our lives. God, the good omnipotent. We are grateful to be one part. Amen. Join with me in blessing our children everywhere on the planet. We love you. We bless you. We truly appreciate you just the way you are. And we behold the Christ in you. Good morning. I am Alice Alexander, your worship assistant for today. On behalf of Unity in the Olympics, located in Port Angeles, Washington, I welcome you to our Sunday celebration service. At this moment, our building is closed to gatherings, yet our hearts and minds remain open to share love and light with you always. We welcome you wherever you are, and thank you for joining us on our virtual service on Facebook and YouTube. Declaration of Faith. Let us honor the silence for a brief moment as we center into the truth of our being. Join with me now as we, we recite together our Declaration of Faith, the fundamental principle of the unity movement as well as unity in the Olympics. There is only one power and one presence in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. Let's say this one more time. There is only one power and one presence in the universe and in my life, God, the good, omnipotent. The Daily Word is a bi-monthly publication by Unity. It offers inspiration and practical teachings through daily prayer messages to help people of all faiths live healthy, prosperous, and meaningful lives. The magazine includes daily affirmations, scripture, prayer messages, articles, spiritual poetry, and more. The Daily Word is a wonderful way to start any day. Today's Daily Word for Sunday, January 10th, 2021 is prosperity. And the affirmation is, I claim prosperity now. When I feel tempted to wish for a more prosperous life, I remember my prosperity begins at the level of my thinking. I focus my thoughts on the many blessings already in my life and feel grateful. From this place of gratitude, it becomes easy to notice more and more blessings all around me. This awareness helps me develop an attitude of prosperity. I tend to my thoughts of prosperity as though they are flowers in a garden. I plant them in good soil and nurture them with water and sunshine. This rich environment allows prospering ideas to take root and grow. As I nurture these ideas, I'm abundantly blessed in life, love, health, and joy. The scripture for today is, they feast on the abundance of your house and you give them drink from the river of your thoughts. Psalms 36, eight. Let's repeat today's affirmation. I claim prosperity now. I got a song to sing I got some joy to bring It's a 
simple song and it's easy everybody sing along you got a song to sing you got a song to sing you got some joy to bring got some joy to bring it's a simple song and it's easy everybody sing along don't be shy don't be shy give it a try give it a try don't be shy give it a try everybody sing she's got a song to sing she's got a song to sing she got some joy to got some joy to bring it's her simple song and it's easy Today, our guest speaker is George Lindemood. The lesson title is Unity After COVID-19. The synopsis was written and edited in December 2020, at least two weeks before today. George states, we have every reason to expect that significant changes will occur in our lives, in our community, in our country, and in the world in the intervening period. Hence, the talk itself will undergo revision right up until it is delivered. And it is impossible to say with certainty that what follows in the next few sentences will actually be reflected in the talk. Nevertheless, we are living in a time of change. Much of it is more profound than we realize. That realization has been slowly dawning on us for the better part of a year, perhaps longer. Thus, who we are and who or what unity is are both moving targets. Despite that uncertainty, that an ambiguity, we would do well to take stock of where we have come from, where we are now, and how we got from there to here. And to do that stubbornly, but not obsessively, at least once a week. After all, what's Sabbath for? What is clear, pretty clear at this point is we can't put the genie back in the bottle. Humpty Dumpty is terminal and probably has been for quite some time, but we didn't realize it, couldn't or didn't want to. However, after un countable attempts to sift through all that we might conclude and take as a starting point for further deliberation here and now. We need a different relationship with the sacred. Fasten your seat belts and hang on to your hat because here we go. George Lindemood has worked as a janitor, bartender, computer designer, college professor, consultant, and lecturer, and cabinet level, level department head in Washington state government. He has played piano in a burlesque theater mm -hmm. pet band, represented the U.S. at conferences in France, India, Jamaica, Japan, New Zealand, and Thailand, and advised the U.S. Special Trade Representative in bilateral negotiations with Japan. He was once told by a job interview that he was a very strangely shaped pig. He didn't get the job. Welcome, George. Good morning. We certainly live in uncertain times. What you, what you thought is so, ain't so anymore. 
it's gone and it won't be coming back. For example, some unthinkable things about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are now being called into question. And we just learned this morning's news that during the fracas on the Capitol last Wednesday, members of Congress were exposed to the coronavirus. What are we going to do now? The messages we've been getting from our leaders, all of them, is mixed, uncertain, ill-considered, Ill even contradictory. Therefore, some of it has to be wrong. But we must start there. Twitter and Facebook were shut down by their operators on January 6. Friends, TV, local newspapers, gossip from social interaction, whatever's left of it, must be checked for truth and balance. All of it. How do we do this, especially in areas and ways that we are unaccustomed to questioning or accepting? We are called to examine our response to events and ask whether our established patterns of behavior are appropriate and adequate. Our normal options are, of course, freeze, fight, and flight. What happened in the U.S. Capitol building last Wednesday suggests that some otherwise good folk were choosing the wrong option. Maybe they still are. And that is the issue I want to address today. Unity and its messages have some influence, perhaps considerable, in our reactions and decisions here. So this is the time and place. My experience gleaned from 80 plus years of wandering and stumbling through life is that serendipity is essential. Serendipity, a $10 word defined as happy chance, unexpected good fortune, luck, providence, fluke. We think we know all about that, don't we? After all, we are schooled in Charles Fillmore's 12 powers, at least some of which are or should be quite relevant. Imagination, understanding, wisdom, will, zeal, faith. But do we understand them? Do we use them? Most of all, do we use them enough? In the Daily Guide magazine, which is the religious science equivalent of uh, the Daily Word community, Daily Guide is the Science of Mind magazine published by the Centers for Spiritual Living, formerly known as Religious Science, in which my wife and I have been reading and discussing over our first cups of coffee every morning for the past 25 years. It suggests that perhaps we err when we let go and let God. And that's a cop out. It suggests that there is more God available. It suggests that there are limitations in what we get, that the limitations are not God's fault, but our fault. That if we don't get what we need, it's our fault. It suggests that what we need to do is adjust our expectations upward and accept more God. More God is always available. God is infinite and so inexhaustible. If there's a limit here, we are placing it. After all, one of the definitions of insanity is doing the same thing over and over while expecting different results. So maybe we have to do something different. Let's go back to Fillmore's Terrific 12 and tweak our imagination. Let's spiff up our wisdom. Let's strengthen our will. Let's strengthen our faith, and maybe a couple others. 
And if that sounds daunting, I have a suggestion as to how to do it. Back when I was growing up, I listened to a lot of popular music on the radio. This was before TV. That tells you how far back it was. And in 1945, one of the hit tunes made popular by Sammy Kay and his orchestra and recorded by several other famous singers, such as the Andrews sister and Frank Frank Sinatra, they became, the song became a favorite. So I learned the song and played it and sang it again and again. Now, as you know, I'm not a singer, so you'll have to bear with me. I will do the best I can. Here's the song. The name of it is Chickory Chick. Once there was a chicken, once there lived a chicken who would say, chick, 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 chick all day. Soon that chick got sick and tired of just chick, 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 chick. So one morning he started to say, chickory chick, chala, chala, chickle a rum. He and a banana, cabalic, a wallic, a can't you see? Chickory chick is me. Chickory chick, chala, chala, chickle a rum. He and a banana, cabalic, a wallic, a can't you see? Chickory chick is me. Every time you're sick and tired of just the same old thing, saying just the same old words all day. He's just like the chicken who found something new to sing. Open up your mouth and start to say, Oh, chickory chick, chala, chala, chickle a rum. Me and a banana, cabalica, wallica, can't you see? Chickory chick is me. Chickory chick, chala, chala, chickle a rum. Me and a banana, cabalica, wallica, can't you see? Chickory chick is me. What is this? The song is nonsense, but the message is there. Chickory Chick is me. And it's you too. You sing the same old song all day, all day, and maybe it's time to sing a new song. This is what we meant when we wrote our book, Nine and a Half Maxims. when we said, get outside the box. It was 90 years ago that Charles Fillmore, the Missouri mystic, published his book on the 12 powers of man. And as good as they are, they're a kind of box. That is what they have become to the extent that they now limit our thinking by preventing us from going any farther. After all, Fillmore died in 1948 which was more than three years after the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Nag Hammadi Library. So it's highly unlikely he had any knowledge of them, could have taken them into account in his thought. It was before TV, it was before space travel, it was more than 20 years before man set foot on the moon. So do we need to update Charles Fillmore, 12 Thoughts? I think so. These ideas came up to my wife and I as we practiced another of the maxims, the one pertaining to daily wisdom study. In the last 25 years, as I say, we've been meeting together at the beginning of each day, two or more gathered together in, in God's name. We've been reading not only the daily guides, but also other wisdom selections. For 2021, we're working through 366 readings from Islam, which is one of six books written by Robert Vanderweyer. In previous years, we've worked through the others on Judaism, a year on Buddhism, a year on Hinduism, a year on Taoism and Confucianism, and a year on Christianity. And in addition to this, this year, we're also reading a book, A Calendar of Wisdom by Leo Tolstoy. This is, social, I, this is suitable for social isolation and is one of our nine and a half maxims. This is how we try to grow spiritually as times change and we change. It's how we find and embrace 
more God. This is not, instead of Fillmore's 12 powers, this is in addition. But it's not the only thing. Other maxims are also pertinent. It's necessary that you find your own wisdom. Some of what we are presented may not fit well for us. It may never fit well for us, or it, we may be able to grow into it. Certainly meditation is a process by which we could begin to do that. My wife and I have been meditating for more than 40 years. And it has changed. Our meditation has changed. We have changed. And we continue to practice that. Another way to do it is to play. Life doesn't always have to be serious, nose to the grindstone, hardship, unhappiness, sorrow. It could be fun. God wants us to be happy. And it, and it can involve magic. Now magic we know has a, a negative connotation that it can be the work of the devil, but it doesn't have to be. Anything that you don't really understand Is, is really a form of magic. As Arthur C. Clarke, the science fiction writer said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. We can also pursue other paths of inner knowing, other religions, other practices, yoga, for example. But most of all, it involves getting beyond your own fear by never giving up. The greatest problem here is fear. These are all part of seeking and finding and accepting more God. All of these are pertinent to and compatible with social distancing. So just do it. Make more God the most important thing you do because it's the most important thing you can do. For a closing meditation, I have a poem entitled Pax, which is the Latin word for peace by D.H. Lawrence. This is from an anthology of sacred poetry by Stephen Mitchell. So prepare for meditation, if you will. All that matters is to be at one with the living God, to be a creature in the house of the God of life. Like a cat asleep on a chair, at peace, in peace, and at one with the master of the house, with the mistress, at home, at home in the house of the living, sleeping on the hearth and yawning before the fire, sleeping on the hearth of the living world, yawning at home before the fire of life, feeling the presence of the living God, like a great reassurance, a deep calm in the heart, a presence as of the master sitting at the board in his own and greater being in the house of life. Peace. Thank you, George, for that inspiring thought and moving meditation. Know that we love you and we bless you and we truly appreciate you for the way you are. And we look forward to exploring more with you in our virtual fellowship garden after the service. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Leave us not in temptation, but deliver us from error, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Don't die with your music inside
Thank you in advance for sharing your ties, gifts, and offerings with us this week. Let us take a moment to hold the thought of your gift in mind and join me in blessing our gifts together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I give in love. Please send your gift by mail to 2917 East Myrtle Street, Port Angeles, Washington, 98362. Or go to the website at www.unityinolympics.org and click on the yellow donate button to tie by credit card or PayPal. Now using your imagination, join us in our closing circle. We gather here holding hands and standing close because we are safe in the powerful sacred space of divine mind. Hold in mind the loving thought of a friend or loved one. See them in the presence, feel them, behold them as whole, perfect and complete as we bring to life James Dillard Freeman's prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. The health of God flows through us. Wherever we are, God is and all is truly well. Divine love prevails. Divine love prevails.